Well, it is not the final chapter, but it is getting darn close. I can't believe that we broke ground like a year and a half ago. To everyone that's been involved, just thank you so much. Scott, Spencer, and myself are just beyond proud of what this cabin turned into. We've had people come on canoe trips. We've had people come catch their first fish. We've had people spend their honeymoon here. The memories that have already been made at Uncle Mark's for myself and for the people that have come, incredible. One of the biggest things that brought this project to the next level was the water system. When we were brainstorming, we said, we don't want to have to bring our water down the lake. We want to have clean drinking water out of Lake of the Woods. So that's where today's sponsor, the Water East Store comes in. When I was doing research, I was looking on YouTube for off-grid water solutions and this guy named Gary the Water Guy kept popping up. He's got a booming YouTube channel with answers to every question you might have in regards to water for your cabin, for your house, etc. His shop is called the Water E-Store, both .ca and .com, depending if you're in the States or in Canada. It's your one-stop shop for any water filtration type parts, pumps, accessories, all that good stuff. So that's where we got all of our stuff from. We will link all the specific parts below that we used for this project. But first, I want to show you what we're dealing with because Lake of the Woods, it turns green sometimes. There's some algae. All right, so here's the water we're dealing with. It is not like this all the time, but it is like this sometimes, especially when the wind blows in. But later in the year, you get that green algae. We're gonna, this video is gonna kind of be back and forth, but a big part of this video is gonna be our conversation between Gary, the water guy, and myself. It'll kind of hop back and forth. I told him our situation, what we're dealing with, what we want out of this system, and he kind of walked me through what we're gonna need and what those parts do. This is a whole new world to me. So anyways, we're gonna cut the conversation with Gary. First, I'm gonna scoop a glass of this water. I'm gonna show you what we're working with. Look at that. Scoop a little more. And that is kind of worst case scenario at Uncle Mark's outpost. We'll see what uh, Gary the Water Guy can do with this. Well, anyways, Gary, thanks for uh, thanks for meeting with me. You know, being a YouTuber myself, I had done a lot of time looking online and searching, you know, water filtration. How do I clean my water? There's a million videos on it, but your channel kept on popping up at the top. And then I looked more and you're local, you're Canadian. How did you get into water filtration, all this stuff? Water filtration, uh, I've been in, doing it for 20 years. And when I, I found out when I got into it, it seemed like so few people knew much about it. Even people selling it didn't seem to know much about it. When I started the YouTube channel 10 years ago, that was my primary focus was just to educate people on how these things work, you know, what can be done, what can't be done. I'd love to pick your brain and see what you had in mind for our property. Obviously you're not here. I'm not able to easily send you a water sample. I think it's a visual thing for people too when they look at water. So I, I would love to have the water cleaned up, like visually appealing. And then obviously tasting good because we want to use this water for doing dishes, drinking, making ice, and then showers, toilet. As far as installation goes, do you think it's something that, you know, people without experience are going to pull off or are we going to need to get someone else in on this or what are, what are your thoughts on that? You know, with my YouTube channel, I do have uh, things like um, a great video. It talks about uh, lake water systems, for example, and it's a video where it's got an infographic that shows each of the different pieces of a lake water system. And then during the video, I explain each piece and how it relates, but also the order that the equipment goes into. I mean, you guys are building a cabin yeah. there. These these videos are not set up for licensed plumbers. These videos are set up for do-it-yourselfers and that's Perfect. what you guys are, right? And like I say, if you have any questions uh, throughout the whole process, you just send me an email. So, I mean, that's what we do here. Yeah. We uh, help people all across North America. That's great. It's always good having a professional to help steer us in the right direction. I appreciate your willingness to help. I th I, I'm excited to to get the ball rolling on this part. Yeah, me too. And, uh, and like I say, you know, if you have any questions, just let us know. All right, so down here is the trench they made for the water line. I'm gonna get Mark to explain this because I don't know what's all going on. I do know the water line needs to be heated for the winter. A lot of cabins out here are just seasonal. We wanna be able to use this as an ice fishing outpost. I see one, two, three, four things down there. So one of these lines is a heat trace. Yep. Uh, outer line if it uh, does freeze or keep it from freezing. Yep. Uh, and then this, the big one is a water pump line we have a submersible pump going in okay yeah the so the time. pump's out there because sometimes the pump would be in the cabin and it would suck it now it's going to be in the lake and it's going to push it up yeah filter big o is just a backup plan uh if we have to run a new line at some point we won't have to get equipment down here oh that's uh, that's a smart move yeah beginning of our water system yeah it's gonna be exciting when you can turn the tap on and get clean drinking water What's going on, Mark? We're putting in the water pump. <laughs> I 
All right, we're hopping back now with our buddy Mike from Victory Plumbing and Heating, and he's gonna help us install the water system we just got from Gary. So if we have any hangups, we're gonna talk to Gary. I think Mike has installed this stuff before. It's gonna happen fast. Mike knows what he's doing. What are we rolling in first? This is your pressure tank. Oh yes, the Scotty strength coming out. Bench that Mike made. You said it took you all night to make the stand? Yeah, I was up till midnight. <laughs> Look at that, beautiful. What do we got here? This is part of the water treatment system. Is that the backwash, I think? The first step always is to clean up the water. To do that, we use what's called a backwashing filter. It has a, a certain kind of sand inside it. As the water passes through, that sand holds up or accumulates the sediment that's in your water, the algae blooms, uh, that kind of a thing. And then it stores it in there for about four or five days. After four or five days, it automatically backwashes to clean itself. And it can backwash outside. It can backwash into a septic system. I was talking to a buddy and he said that that they had to change the filter so often because the algae taking that algae out is that something we're gonna have to deal with swapping out filters or is that since it's since it's backwashing we don't have to touch that as much then no you won't have to touch it because um the automatic backwashing filter we've actually had it customized specifically for algae removal so it's going to do the heavy lifting that's cool. what it's going to do. The fine filters downstream of the, the UV system, those are still going to need to be changed, but nowhere near as often as your friend. And that's why they've created these automatic backwashing filters, because it's a common problem. So the first was, one's backwash, I think, and the second one's the tannin filter. This is your tannin filter, yeah. yeah. Tannins in itself is an aesthetic. So tea is tannins, wine is tannins. You know, you can have tannins in your water, have bacteria in it. You can have tannins in your water, not have bacteria in it. It's not related actually to bacteria, but it makes it a lot more aesthetically pleasing and it makes sure you're not going to get staining of the fixtures these are crazy tanks i didn't realize when we got them this is it's this is a serious system so the other thing we got to say is mike had this all pretty much lined up and ready to go and then uncle mark came in in a furious fit of rage and said we're painting this white and put the flooring in so we had to pull everything out the boys painted it put our new flooring in yeah everything this is what is this, this reverse is, osmosis nope this is the uv ah there you go so that's the canister where the uv light will be in so sort of the third stage of this whole thing is uh the three-stage ultraviolet disinfection system so the first part of that is now it's a fine sediment filter the second part of that is the carbon filters so carbon is a taste and odor filter yeah so as the water passes through that it gets rid of that fishy smell from the water and now you might like that fishy smell <laughs> not a water to my water <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it gets rid of that. And then the last part of the three-stage ultraviolet disinfection system is an ultraviolet light. You know, obviously we're going to use light. We have to clean up the water so that the light can shine through and be able to kill that bacteria. Isn't this water system sweet? What is that canister? Pressure tank slash reservoir for your reverse osmosis. Okay. And then the last stage of the whole thing that I'd recommend to you is a second barrier for your drinking water. So a reverse osmosis drinking water system is the way to go for that. And the beauty of it is you want to get the water to the stage where you don't have to carry in water because yeah. that's a pain. The days of 20 years ago or 30 years ago coming out to a cabin and expecting, you know, disgusting water and dis disgusting toilet and disgusting everything yeah. are long gone, you know. Nobody wants that anymore. You weren't joking about how fast you were going to put it together. Show me this. What do you, what do you do here? You took yeah, some... That's our heat trace line. Yeah. And we've got a submersible pump. So this cable is our submersible pump. That goes all the way in the water. That's what we just did. Our pressure tank then builds pressure, pushes it through this. Takes out all the algae and all the big granules. Sediment, stuff. yeah. Then this has a brine wash and it takes out the tannins. And then this one would be your UV system. Yeah. So then that water's like really good. That's what you shower with. I would drink that. That's great. But then we're going above and beyond and we're putting it into an RO or reverse osmosis system. Then that feeds to this this will come over by the kitchen so then everybody will be drinking some pretty high quality water the uh, automatic backwashing filter the tannin filter and the uv system are all made in canada cool they're all uh non-proprietary so you can get the replacement light bulbs the replacement filters you can get parts for these things you can order them online uh, you know obviously from us but you can also order them online from a number of other vendors you know life expectancy is 20 years so it's uh it's definitely a long-term investment that's for sure the reverse osmosis system is made in the u.s but again it is non-proprietary i can't wait to see this because you should see how i mean you guys have seen how green the water is it's yeah, we'll see what it looks like when it comes through. Yeah. All right, so there's a lot of parts of this system. 
as you saw, we're gonna top up the salt. Something Gary mentioned, we have used the system, we have purged it, I guess you wanna say. You wanna have a few gallons of water running through all these filters for the first time before you just start drinking water out of it. And then we're gonna show you the water out of the main tap, not even the drinking tap. The main tap has, uh, doesn't have the reverse osmosis. It has the UV, the backwash, and the tannin filter. That's what we'll show you for now. But anyways, Scott's gonna top up the salt and then we'll take a look. All right, so this is for the water softening part of it. Got the salt, we'll close that baby up. All right, this is the final walkthrough, guys. We got the heat trace and the main water supply coming in there to the pressure tank, backwash filter, tannin filter, the water softening container there. Then you've got the UV light, kills everything, splits off. This is the drinking water supply with the reverse osmosis, which is specific for the drinking water tap. And then right here is our shutoff for the entire system if we need. And then there's the water going to the Navy. And this is the on-demand hot water heater. That's it, pretty, pretty slick system. We're gonna go uh, get a glass of water out of the tap and compare it to what we started with. All right, so this is the drinking water tap that does the reverse osmosis, but this is the tap that I've been drinking from most of the season. There you go, beautiful water from the lake. We are gonna fill up a glass and we will do our final reveal. All right, here we have it. This is maybe a little bit accentuated from what the water normally is, but you saw it, it was straight out of the bay. And this is our main tap, not even our drinking water tap. I'd say it looks a little bit better. <laughs> what do you think? Which one do you want? That's so good. You can drink that one. Well, we can't even do the comparison if Scotty drinks it all. Oh. <laughs> well, that's it, Scotty. Pretty awesome. All right, well guys, I gotta say massive thanks to Gary. Uh, I wanted to put this video out a long time ago, but I wanted to have everything ready and, and we've had the system in for a while and we've slowly been chipping away and had a couple hiccups along the way, but Gary's been uh, great to talk to an expert. Now we have clean drinking water from the lake for the shower for the dishes. Yeah, it's surprisingly a lot easier than you think. And this is a robust system. We could run another cabinet of this if we wanted, but it will be more than enough for Uncle Mark's for years to come. All right, well, we just got a couple chapters remaining, guys. So stay tuned and uh, Uncle Mark's is coming to a close.